Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jampamine, and that Will Smith guy. Am, am I right? Yeah. Wow, so the Oscars happened. Did you see the Oscars? The Oscars were so good. Said no one ever. Look, nobody really cares about the Oscars anymore. Viewership has been on the decline since 2016, ever since Leonardo DiCaprio got his Oscar and the La La Land fiasco happened. So if you're anything like me, you found out that the Oscars happened a couple days ago because my wife told me while I was doing homework at my desk, that Will Smith slapped a guy. <laughs> that guy being Chris Rock. I don't know why I said that guy. It's, I mean, it's Chris Rock. So instead of being one of the thousands of people to go online and make memes about it, I decided to go get a free trial of FUBU TV, which is, which is only free for a week? And then you have to pay $70 a month? That's the only option I have? To watch the Oscars? Jeez, and these people are wondering why nobody watches it. <laughs> anyway, what was I saying? Oh yeah, I want a context. And I've also never watched the entirety of an Oscars before. So I decided to do that. And after doing it, I'm never going to watch the entirety of an Oscars again. Oh my God, it's so boring. So right off the bat, I want to say that the foreshadowing is hilarious because it starts with Venus and Serena Williams introducing Beyonce. Tonight, movie lovers across the globe will unite right here at the Oscars. Oh, wow! Sometimes foreshadowing is relatively obvious. Beyonce sings about Compton for like three minutes and then DJ Khaled, he introduces our three co-hosts and Amy Schumer is one of them, which, huh? man, what can be said about Amy Schumer that hasn't been said a thousand times? Yeah, pretty much nothing. So I decided to write a haiku about her. It's Amy Schumer, career is oxymoron unfunny jester. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. I put a lot of work into that. <laughs> Anyways, how she managed to co-host the Oscars, I have no idea, but the haiku still stands. She said one funny thing, the entirety of the Oscars, and it's about Will Smith slapping Chris Rock. Uh, but don't worry, I'll get to that. First, let's just see what funny things she has to say in her opening monologue. Wait a minute, I loved that movie. Jennifer Lawrence was amazing in it, even though she did gain some weight this year. Um... What? That's the whole joke? How is that supposed to be funny? That's that's just mean. Is it... Is the joke that she... She looked fat in her role? Or that she just gained weight in general? Like, I... What? Hey, thank you, thank you. Alright, thanks, welcome, welcome. Thanks, thanks for coming out tonight. Alright. Man. That, you know that Jennifer Lawrence? What a fat ass, you know what I mean? <laughs> oh man, that Will Smith though? Man, he seems to have a common collected head, you know what I mean? Like, like he would never slap me for saying something like that about Jennifer Lawrence, you know what I mean? Yeah. How did you find me? Yeah. <laughs> she does this thing where if, if her joke doesn't land, she just starts to explain it, like that's supposed to make it funny, and it just, it doesn't. And I mean, Leonardo DiCaprio, what can I even say about him? It's, he's done so much to fight climate change and leave behind a cleaner, greener planet for his girlfriends. <laughs> because he's older and they're, and they're younger. Okay, you get it. Also, if you really want to make this bearable, if you do decide to watch it, just take a shot anytime they mention COVID because it happens like eight times. This is so exciting. I just want to congratulate all of you. During a raging pandemic, you made a movie. Ah. This is this is chocolate milk, in case you're wondering. It's 2 p.m. Oh, also, Dune won six Oscars, which I think is hilarious because it was like an okay movie, but it was nominated for like 10 categories. So anytime a new category comes up, it's like the same four movies. Even it was like best documentary, Power of the Dog, Dune, West Side Story, King Richard. And then just repeat times 20. There you go. You just watched the Oscars. 
Uh, well, I've come with a bit of bad news. As you know, everyone here has been tested for COVID, but unfortunately, some of the test results have gotten lost. So before we go on with the show, we just have to do some quick emergency testing backstage. Don't worry. It's only a few people. It's totally random. This this bit is also incredibly unfunny and also about COVID. So let me let me just. <coughs> wow, they've brought in the stars of hit movie. White men can't jump. I've literally never heard of that movie, but sure. Okay, why not? Okay, let me just uh, do this real quick. All right, and where are we at? We're only 40 minutes in. Ah. Oh look, Dune's winning another Oscar. Standing work from all the artists uh, at Dineg um, for putting us here tonight. Thank you. They ask you how you are, and you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. Dankeschön. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Holy crap, that's brutal. He even got a pity cheer, dude. No. That was this dude's villain origin story. I would not be surprised if in a couple of years he overthrew the Oscars. Actually, please do. I am dying watching this. There's this random tribute to James Bond inserted into this, and I'm pretty sure Daniel Craig isn't even there, so like... Movie fans around the world have been voting for their favorite movie moments. The ones that make them stand up and cheer. Here are your top five. Ooh, it's a top five countdown. I love these. Okay, yeah, the Matrix bullet dodge. Yeah, of course, iconic. D Dream Girls. Uh, I haven't haven't seen this movie. Uh, sure. Avengers Endgame is only number three. Suspicious. Spider-Man No Way Home. Okay, should have been number one, but I can forgive it if number one is actually something super amazing. <laughs> Zack Snyder's Justice League. <laughs> I I don't believe for two seconds you polled real people and actually tallied the votes, and this is these are the results that you came up with. I that movie is four hours long. I watched it once and promptly forgot that it existed. You chose you chose Flash going speedy over three Spider-Man. And three is the magic number. Can you believe this? We got two super superheroes on stage right now. Two? Uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah. Two sure superheroes. Be. See, you've been in Marvel movies. Yeah. And I'm Tiffany Haddish. <laughs> mm -hmm. oh, I'm gonna take a shot to lessen the blow of that. Jeez. Recent global events have left many of us feeling gutted. Would you calm down? I haven't even finished this shot yet. Jeez. So there's this message about the Russian-Ukrainian conflict in the middle of this. And I'm not saying it's a bad message because it's a good message. But you just told me that Zack Snyder's Justice League was ranked higher than Spider-Man No Way Home. So nothing you can ever say to me, Oscars, I'm ever going to take seriously again. I'm going to, okay, I'm going to make a prediction, okay? Years from now, when this conflict is all over, Hollywood's gonna make a movie about this and gross millions of dollars. Just mark my words. Hey, they sing that Bruno song. Look, it's, don't talk about Bruno. <laughs> uh, no. No, no, delete it. Turn it off. Stop it. You really just inserted a rap about the Oscars in the middle of We Don't Talk About Bruno. Ay, ay. <laughs> You're supposed to be serene. I'm right here. Wait, what the hell? <laughs> what are you doing? This was not the plan. What we're supposed to dress up as our favorite movie, right? All right, you know. Oh boy, another top five! Hopefully number one isn't something stupid again. Sometimes foreshadowing is relatively obvious. Number five, uh, Tick Tick Boom. Well deserved. Uh, number four uh, is Spider-Man No Way Home. It's only number four. Oh boy. <laughs> Minamata? Uh, I didn't see it, but okay, why not? Number two is... Whoa! 
Where's my tail? I, I can't balance without my tail! <laughs> no, 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 no! <laughs> Yeah, of course. How could I not see that James Corden becoming a human, transforming from a mouse, is better than Spider-Man? Like, how could I not see the hilarity in that? <laughs> James Corden go burr. <laughs> Who are these people that they're pulling? And number one is Army of the Dead. I mean, I, mean, I never saw it, so I don't really have an opinion about it. But why is this here? Also, I can't believe they put... Spider-Man No Way Home in spot number four and spot number two instead of putting it in spot number three because three is a magic number. Okay, finally, we made it to the Chris Rock stand-up comedy part of the show. You guys know what happened. Chris Rock made a joke about Will Smith's wife being bald even though she has a disease which makes her lose her hair. Will Smith visibly laughed about it and then 10 seconds later, he got up and slapped Chris Rock in the face. I love you, G.I. Jane 2, can't wait to see it, all right? <laughs> <laughs> it's, that, was a, that was a nice one, okay. I'm out here, uh-oh, Richard. <laughs> I can't believe you've done this. And you know what? Real talk for a minute, I can't even believe that there is a debate about whether Will Smith was in the right here, okay? He was not. You can't just slap a comedian for making a joke, okay? That's his job. Even if it was in bad taste, that's like slapping a chef who burnt your food. And have you seen celebrity roasts? What Chris Rock said compared to those was mild. You could go to Buffalo Wild Wings and ask for Chris Rock wings, and they'll bring you out teriyaki. I believe... If someone attacks you with words, you should defend yourself with words. And if someone attacks you physically, you should defend yourself physically. It would have been so much different if Will Smith got up during his acceptance speech and said, Yo, Chris Rock, um, what you said about my wife was super disrespectful. She has a disease called alopecia. That's why she's bald. I would like you to publicly apologize to her for humiliating her. Different story, right? Now there's egg on Chris Rock's face. And don't even, don't even be like... Oh, but Will Smith didn't know he was going to win. Uh, yes, he did. He knew he was going to win an Oscar. They all do. The aftermath of this incident is just it's so bizarre. Because Sean Diddy Combs gets up there and he's like, we're going we're gonna to move on with love and we're going to treat this like we're a family. And it just cuts to Will Smith laughing hysterically like he didn't just go up on stage on live television and just assault a dude. And then like... Not even 30 minutes later, he gets up there to accept his Oscar, and he... Uh, I'm being called on in my life to love people. <laughs> oh, wow! No, to do what we do, you gotta be able to take abuse, you gotta be able to have people talk crazy about you. In this business, you gotta be able to have people disrespecting you. And you gotta smile and you gotta pretend like that's okay. <laughs> oh, wow! I wanna be a vessel for love. <laughs> oh, wow! I wanna apologize to the Academy. I wanna apologize to my, all my fellow nominees. Okay. Do you wanna apologize to Chris Rock? This is a beautiful moment. Oh. Yeah, okay, that's fine. I'm sure he won't press charges or anything. Wait, what? Oh. Oh, he's not pressing charges. Wow, good for him. But love will make you do crazy things. Um. Yes. Yes, exactly like we rehearsed 10 minutes ago. Uh. Yeah. Yeah, and that's basically the whole thing. So, uh. There you go. We 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 just watched the entire Oscars together. Um, it sucked. It was terrible. It was boring. It has sucked for a long time. So just don't watch the Oscars. It's the moral of the story. I mean, it's not like you were watching the Oscars anyway. I mean, nobody really is anymore. So oh shoot, I almost forgot that that funny thing Amy Schumer said. Uh, I love West Side Story. Did you see it? It's so good. Ugh. I've been getting out of that Spider-Man costume. Did I miss anything? <laughs> there's like, there's like a different vibe in here.
That made me grin. Congratulations. Too bad it was immediately followed by the most unfunny thing I've ever seen. So it takes 2,700 people to put on the Oscars and every job is equally important, okay? The gaffers, the camera people, the seat fillers, everybody, all right? And oh, so what the seat fillers do, I hear you seat fillers. Um, I'll just explain what you do. Uh, so when you get up to go to the bathroom or if you're going to cry because you didn't win, um, some, oh my God. Uh, actually, you know what? Let me just show you what the seat fillers do. Okay, here's a seat filler. Can we get you Stop up? It. Honey, you, you want to go to the bathroom? No. Okay. Let's just get you. Thank you, seat fillers. Love them. Jesse, I love you and Power of the Doll. Stop. Uh, you know, that, that was my wife. This isn't uh, funny. Are you married to that seat filler? No. Anyways, uh, this stunt from Will Smith garnered way more attention to the Oscars than it otherwise would have, so I think moving forward every single year, something like this needs to happen in order for it to stay relevant. That's going to be it for this video, guys. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you're not subscribed, uh, go ahead and do that, please. <laughs> it, it helps me out a lot. Um, other than that, I will see you in the next one. Bye.